Okay, I've got some big news, and that is that I'm quitting my full-time software engineering job in order to pursue freelance work and work on my own products. I've got a video coming about why I decided to quit and why now, but for today, I wanted to focus on the freelancing part. There's a lot that's hard about freelancing, like having to find your own work to do, but there's also a lot that seems great about it, like having flexibility. I think most people just like the stability of a full-time job and don't want to have to go out and rustle up their own business. But I think for anybody that's interested in freelance, if you can find a few reliable sources of clients, then it makes the volatility of the whole thing a lot easier to stomach. And when it comes to finding reliable work, four particular strategies come to mind for me. There are either things that I've tried or things that I expect that I will try in the coming year. And so I wanted to talk about those today in hopes that they might give you a few ideas or inspiration for how you might go about building up your own roster of clients. So I'm gonna talk about four strategies for finding clients. And for each of those, I'm gonna talk about some examples of what it would look like to implement that strategy, as well as the pros and the cons for each. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first and probably the most common strategy is to use a platform to find freelancing work. So examples of using one of these could be looking on a website that you've probably heard of like Upwork or Fiverr, or you could look on a site that is more focused on developers like TopTal or Gun.io. I think most people, when they think about freelancing, think about starting maybe on one of these platforms, assuming you don't have your own audience or brand. We'll talk about that in a second, but these platforms are there for a reason and they have a lot of positives. I think the main positive for you as a freelancer is that they aggregate demand. Basically what that means is you don't have to go out looking for the work and trying to figure out who would want to hire a freelancer because the people that are looking to hire freelancers are already there on the site. Now, the flip side of that is that these marketplaces are often very crowded, right? Because people don't wanna go out and try and figure out who wants a freelancer. The people that want the freelancers are already there. And so the way that these platforms work is they attract a large number of candidates and then the people who are hiring whittle them down. So you're competing by nature against a lot of other people. Another thing that comes along with that is it's really hard to stand out and the whole process is not very personalized. So it's not about getting to know you as a developer. It's really about trying to oftentimes have the lowest rates or prove that you can do the work the best, but that's often hard. So there's just a lot that comes along with these platforms that is challenging. You're probably gonna make less money. And in the case of sites like Fiverr, the contracts or gigs are often not very long-term either. And so you often end up having to go out and find more and more work and you end up spending a lot of time on that lead generation. I mentioned that it's hard to stand out on these platforms, but a much better way of standing out and having a more personalized experience is through leveraging your network. I think for a lot of people, your network these days means just posting on LinkedIn. In theory, there's a lot of people that are your actual connections on it. And this could look like just throwing up a post saying, hey, I'm out here, I'm looking for you know, X number of hours per week of contracting work, DM me if you're interested. The pros of something like this is that if there is work coming from it, the odds are good that it's from a connection or a connection of a connection. And for me, that would just mean that there's a higher likelihood of the gig working out and being a good match. And you're probably going to get paid more because you can leverage your reputation. The drawback to this strategy is that a lot of people on LinkedIn specifically may just not be looking for freelance developers or freelance whatever it is that you do. And so the opportunities aren't concentrated like they are on a platform. I think this approach can fall short because you're putting a post out there and basically just hoping that it finds the right person and that that person wants to hire a freelancer. So that brings us to our third strategy, which is doing some outbound. This is basically like the last strategy, except way more active on your part. So what would this look like? For me, this would look like going on LinkedIn and searching for recruiters that work for companies that you think are interesting or where you think you could add value. Then you could either reach out to them directly or use a Chrome extension to scrape their email and then follow up with them with a personalized email. I would probably write something like, hey, so-and-so, I'm a freelance developer and I'm looking to pick up X number of hours per week, kind of like in our LinkedIn post. Let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in. These are my specializations. Here's my cell phone number. Something like that, very short and sweet. The advantage of this strategy is that you're not just 
hoping that a post on LinkedIn finds the right person. You're actually, like I said, being active. You're doing some of the legwork. You're deciding who you would like to work with and you're just more taking control of the situation. As a result, you have a higher degree of agency of who you end up working with in the long term. Now, it's probably no surprise that the con to this strategy is that it's probably the most labor intensive of all the strategies that I'm going to mention. So you could end up putting in a lot of work and it might just not work out. And that brings us to our last strategy, which is probably the best strategy, but also the hardest one to pull off kind of like running a SaaS. I talked about in one of my past videos, the SaaS is kind of like the holy grail for developers because it provides passive income. This is like the holy grail of freelancing and that is inbound. This basically looks like people are coming to you and that's either through your reputation, a brand you've built up, an audience you have online, SEO, stuff like that. And this is great, right? If you have people that are reaching out to you, it means you can filter and be selective about who you work with. And you don't have to do all that legwork that I mentioned in our last strategy doing outbound. You can just let the opportunities come to you. Of course, the con, the drawback for most people is that it takes usually a really long time to build up a brand or your reputation or an audience or high ranking on a page for SEO. All that stuff is labor intensive, so you're putting a lot of work in on the front end and the results may not appear ever or may not appear for a very long time. So there's a reason why it's the most attractive thing. It's because it's the hardest to pull off. Probably the fewest number of people are actually able to accomplish it. And for that reason, it's the most desirable. So those are my four strategies for finding freelance work. I hope this was helpful. I'll give an update if you're interested in what ends up happening with my own freelance journey. I'm probably gonna end up trying all of these in some form or fashion with maybe the exception of platforms. I don't really love the platforms, but if you're interested, then comment down below saying you want an update and I'm more than happy to give that in a few months once I've had a chance to try a few of these things out. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment, so consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.